Let's continue with our exploration of the Smart Retopple Toolset update in 30 Coat 2023 by turning our attention now to the Loft mode, which is one of the three primary modes at the top of the Tool Options panel in this list menu. I also want to discuss the Freehand Stroke mode. We used it in the previous video, but I want to go into further detail about it. When it's checked, you'll see a simplification parameter, which we discussed in a previous video, and you will also notice that there is a curve applied to the freehand stroke, and it has control points spaced evenly along the path. As discussed in the previous video, the simplification factor determines how many control points will be placed along the freehand stroke. For example, if I go all the way down to maybe like 0.1, you can easily see how excessive that is. If we wanted to make any corrections to the overall shape, we would have to move a lot of control points. So let me hit escape. If I go all the way to one, as I demonstrated in the previous video, you can see very few points. With this option unchecked, then we need to manually place our control points one click at a time and 3D Coat will create a curve in between the individual control points. When I'm finished creating the spline, I can simply hit the Escape key. And then if I want to remove it, I can hit Escape once more. The benefit here is that the user has ultimate control over the number of points and their exact location. With all of that said, I'll go back to the freehand stroke mode the rest of the way. On a side note, I want to mention that when you want to scale your brush, you will need to move your cursor outside the mesh and then you can right mouse button click to the left or right in order to scale your brush. Because once you are inside the mesh, then 3D Coat presumes you want to make tweaks to the mesh, indicated by the highlighted vertex or edge respectively. I'll do that now because I need to scale my brush down so I can pick an edge. I can't do it with such a large brush radius. Now I can right mouse button click and drag to reposition it however I want. You could also just simply scale your brush up and down anywhere by using your bracket keys like you would in Photoshop. One way we can use the loft mode is to create a simple edge extrusion. So I will select a row of edges by clicking the first vertex and then left mouse click the last vertex of the edge row I want to extrude. And you will notice how 3D Coat creates a curve in between and places a control point at every single vertex it detects along the way. Now, if I want to create an extrusion, I will just simply sketch the boundary of that extrusion. I can add another curve inside and then hit the Enter key or Apply button in order to generate the polygons. The second way the loft mode can be utilized is to generate polygons from scratch in a group or patch entirely separate from anything else, which I will try to demonstrate here along the chin and jawline. Okay, and I can create an intermediate line. I can adjust the V-spans to add some additional edge loops as well. I also adjusted the number of U-spans in the tool options panel to match the number of edges at the bottom of the strip in the mouth region. That way I can bridge them later on. So I think that's enough. Let's go ahead and hit the Enter key. And it appears that we have a snapping issue, so I will hit Control Z to undo. This is some distance off the surface, so I need to probably create a curve right there to help it conform to the surface a bit better. All right, and would not hurt to place one there also. And I want to make sure that lines up along the symmetry line so that it welds properly. Okay. So let's add some intermediate edge loops here. And I'll hit the Enter key. All right. Got to weld that. Okay. So as you can see, we've created just an individual patch of polygons. We can also bridge between two existing polygonal groups. So what I can do here is click the first point and second point. So I have one, two, three, four, five edges that I want to bridge over here. But having just one V-span I think will be sufficient. 
I can hit the enter key. And it's just that simple to use it as a bridging tool. And with that, we will conclude this overview of the loft mode in 3D Code Smart Retopple tool set updated in 3D Code 2023. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video where we will look at the quadrangulation mode.